Hello, villagers. How's it going? Today, I wanted to chat with you about getting out of your own way. So, oh, so many of you, I think, have awesome intentions, and I think that you really feel very prepared. And I think that a lot of you do try hard, but are you trying hard on the right places? Slash, are you trying as hard as you could if you had some support? So one of the best quotes that I think that sticks out to me, I have two of them actually that I will share with you. One of them comes from um, a dear friend turned client. So we were friends first and uh, then she had a traumatic birth. And um, so she hired me to navigate that space. And after hearing her birth story, it is true. Um, she carries around a lot of trauma. And one of the things that she said that really sticks out to me is, yeah, but in all of the real housewives, she just tells her husband to whisper diamonds in her ears and it works. And for me, that just, you know, goes to show we have such a skewed perception of what birth is. And this particular mom even said that she felt very prepared and she thought that she had done all of the things to prepare for this birth and it was still based on unrealistic expectations and or a false thought of what birth really is. The second thing that I'll share is that I had a client once who thought that birthing on your back was really the only option. And so when I asked her to tell me in what position she thought that she wanted to birth in, she was like, on my back, in a bed. And I was like, is that your preference or is that because that's all you've ever seen? And she was like, yeah, because it's all I've ever seen. I don't know. Seems good to me. And I was like, all right, let's pump the brakes because we need to rewind hard and make a few hard left turns along the way because where we are now is not where we need to be. And so that's what I'm going to help you do today. But first, you have to get out of your own way. You have to be able to say that maybe the circles that you're in right now are not the best ones for you. It is not always the prettiest conversation. It doesn't always feel lovely. And it's not always really empowering. Some people will find power in that. And some people will find encouragement and energy and it's exciting to explore things outside of your comfort zone or what you think is normal. But some people don't. Some people, it's really hard and it's scary, but you have to. Otherwise, you are given over control. And if that is what you do, then unfortunately, it will be no one's fault but you, your own. You won't have anybody to blame but yourself because these things are out there for you. So how, how do you get out of your own way? I hear that. That's hard. For me, the antidote to fear is exploration. It's education. It is knowing your options and your choices and where can you go from here. And so I encourage you, no matter where you are in the spectrum of reproductive health, whether you are trying to conceive, you're going through IVF, you're pregnant, you're about to have a baby any day now, you're a new parent, or you feel like you're done with children, you still should know what's going on with your body and what answers you have to the questions that you have. So a couple of ways that you can do that and a couple of places that you can explore. My favorite, podcast. So I love to listen to podcasts. I soak up so much information from other podcasts. Um, I think podcasts are great. They are sometimes very scripted and sometimes they are very loose. Sometimes, um, you know, there are people that you like to hear from and there will be people who just bore you to tears. You don't have to listen to those podcasts. Find something different. If podcasts aren't your thing, blogs are another really awesome 
tool that you can use. And the wonderful thing for me about blogs is that they're real life people, right? Blogs are just other people's stories. They're not medical advice. They are not research based most of the time. I suppose there probably are research based blogs out there, but the blogs that I'm talking about are just regular moms, just like you, who have a story and their story might open you up to another opportunity or an option that you have that you haven't otherwise thought of or found or heard of. And how amazing is that, that you came across yet another option that you have because you have options in pretty much everything, right? Number three, and it's something I've recently started to use myself I'm quite an old soul, I suppose. Videos from YouTube. So this is something that I have started to utilize in my practice because I feel like I want people to be almost desensitized by birth a little bit. Whenever you go into birth, I don't want the first time for you to be seeing a birth to be your own. I want you to have somewhat of a mental image of what you can expect. And for me, it's better if you have seen several different variations and different positions and different environments and different approaches to birth. If you have several different images in your head, then we have a way bigger toolbox to pull from than if you just have that one idea that you saw on Sex in the City that one time and she was screaming and straining and red face and on her back pushing with lots of people screaming around her. We got a real problem, sister. All right. Podcast, blogs, videos. Number four, and this is kind of crazy to say, I never thought I would be here, but I've recently found the benefit in it so much. Mom groups on Facebook. So again, you're always going to have those outliers that are like, way, way off track with their answer. And you're always going to have these people who are super passionate as well. Then you're going to have people who have a similar story as you. And those are the people you want to focus on. So thank everybody that writes in and take it all with a grain of salt. Do your own filtering. All you're doing right now is getting other people's stories, much like the blogs that you're reading. So uh, gather everybody's stories, know what your options are, thank everybody, but don't let those outliers, you know, penetrate that bubble that we have created around your mindset. Finally, and this is something that should start way before you find out you're pregnant if you are intentionally trying, but read. Read, 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 read all the books, read all the things, read all the articles. Seriously, read it all. Um, you want to know the most extreme sides on either side of the spectrum. You want to know the middle. You want to know the pros and cons of all the things. You want to know all this stuff, so just gobble it up, especially if you're not pregnant and you are setting those intentions and you're really trying to get pregnant. There's no better way to prepare for and make space for baby than educating yourself and showing your body and the universe and God and your spirits and your guides and whatever you use in your life that you're ready, right? Because you're you're taking in all this information, you're doing the groundwork, you're laying the foundation. There we go. I have put together a list of readings and this is something that I give my clients. I'll share it with you guys. I'll link it in the show notes for you and um, you can have that. I want you to see what books I think are good and all of these books are either books I have read or I own. I suppose if I own them I have read pieces of them and or the whole thing um, and or sometimes two or three times. So check that out in the show notes. Those are my five ways that you can get out of your own your own pond. I want you to expand your horizons. I want you to join those Facebook groups that make you uncomfortable and that show you that unassisted birth and show you breach birth and show you birth out in the wilderness and show you birth underwater and show you all the things because I want you to know what your options are. It doesn't matter so much what you choose, rather that you chose with a complete table filled with options, right? I never want you to be staring at your table and only have an option or two. I always want you to have 
plenty of options and have looked into that. Nothing makes me more angry than when I find that people make excuses for themselves. So stop being in your own way. Stop running from those uncomfortable feelings. Stop blaming your trauma on other people and stop trying to control the situation. You guys, stop making excuses for yourself. There's nothing impossible until you decide and you agree that it is impossible. Otherwise, you just haven't found the solution. You just have to keep trying. Whenever you decide that it's impossible, let me know. I'll also stop sending good vibes your way. Until then, you have a huge community and this wonderful tribe behind you. Trust me, we love you so much. There's truly nothing that you can't do. That's a double negative. I know that wasn't awesome English, but the fact remains. All right, guys. Happy, happy Friday. Head over and check out that reading list that I have for you. And hang out in just a few minutes. I have a huge announcement coming your way. Thanks so much for showing up for me, guys. By showing up for me, you're showing up for yourself and your kids and your partner and everyone in your life. Thanks so much for putting back into your cup so that you can give back to us a little bit fuller and a little bit more joyous and a little bit more gentle. Happy Friday. As always, villagers, find your tribe and love them hard.